So that low resistance to be measuring here, it looks like that was just a rabbit hole to go down for no apparent reason. That supply apparently powers a CRT, I mean I haven't looked at that yet. It apparently goes CRT and I pulled that board out there and we're now getting, well, a lot more resistance. We're now getting 590 ohms there, so 0.59k. So that is um, normal, I wouldn't worry about that one. Let's go back to diode test and let's recheck that again. We're chasing something which isn't there, that's annoying. Through is 0.581, that's fine. And this way is 0 0.90. So it's probably circuitry is powering which is causing a problem. So I think we can just ignore that now. Move on. Well, that was still fun. So since we've got this board out, we might as well give it a going over. I suppose to make sure that all the boards are correct. And well, this is the only board we haven't looked at yet. So it's got a whole bunch of electrolytics on here, so I need to check all of them. We also have to make sure they're all dead first, so not end up zapping something. And also I need to clean the connectors up and stuff like that, the other boards. And um, we'll go through that process and see if there's anything wrong with it. So I looked over this board, measured all the electrolytic caps. They all seem fine. They all seem to be what I'd expect them to be. So I don't have a problem with this board. I think this one's fine. I'm just going to clean it up, put it back in. Right, so let's power this thing up and see what happens for the first time since giving it a bit of a going over. Obviously still got a few things I need to check. You know, the actual main motherboard down here has got a few things and the CRT stuff maybe. But we checked all the cards poked around a bit and did a couple of things and clean things up. We'll see if anything's changed. Let's power on. Let's increase voltage slightly. Yeah, T30, I'll do. You ready? We're gonna get smoke. It's gonna work. Any bets? I should push a button and stand back, shouldn't I? Well, that is exactly the same. Power on test error. Yep, no different. And it says RAM F down the bottom here. So I think we do have a RAM problem. That's inconvenient. So I'm gonna test voltages on this thing, just for the sake of completeness. It does look like it's got a RAM problem, but let's test voltages before we go away. I'll tell you what they are as I'm probing. That is doing 11.8 volts. Slightly low. It's also 11.8 volts. Be minus 12, it is. This should be plus 8. That's 7.96, that's fine. Plus 5. Plus 5. Maybe that's a separate rail. I'm not getting anything there. If I measure the center pin, nothing there. So it might be a floating rail, it might be different to this one. Yeah, I'm getting nothing in there either. Minus 15, nothing in that one. This might be separate rails. Might be floating. And plus 24, get nothing in that one either. So I think these rails are on a separate rail, they're floating isolated from this one. These are all VI, and these are separate. So I think these ones are readable because they're in the shared ground, and these ones are not shared, that's why I can't read them. So let's probe onto there and do it again. I'm not getting anything there. Let's probe to that point there, try here. Getting 24 volts there, that's right. Well, it's 23 point something, what is it? 23.7 pretty much. Next one, 15.13, that's fine. Minus 15 here, minus 15.1, that's fine. Plus 5 here, yeah, 4.96. And plus 5 here again, plus 4.93. So yeah, the rails are looking okay. That plus 24 is slightly down, wasn't it? It wasn't much though. It's 0.3 volts, it's down a little bit. Probably doesn't matter though. So, rails look basically okay there. So the other thing we look at as well is indicator LEDs. So I've already checked the ones on the power supply for overload over here. Those weren't lighting up, so those look good. There's some other LEDs over here. Let's just turn it on, check those ones out. So we've got a green LED here. That's on. That one's not on. I don't know what the significance of that is. Okay, that one's now gone off. Now it's back on again. So I don't know what these LEDs are supposed to be doing. That one's not coming on at all, but that one's coming on off a couple of times. There you go, red one coming on. So maybe that's like a boot up thing. I did read something about this on the EV blog forum. So they're doing something. Are they right? I don't know, I'm gonna to have to read into that. This is doing its testing, obviously, it's probably tying up to that. 
let's watch the LEDs in conjunction with the screen. See as the screen was refreshing, that red LED flashed on. Now it's doing the self-testing. Testing the screen. It's doing the button test. Now it's stopped. Maybe it's not like a wait state or something. But that, say, that top LED hasn't come on at all, but I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because it's not got the... Yeah, so that red one's coming on when it's doing a reset. I don't know, I have to find out what those do. And just over here are the red LEDs for overload. None of those have lit up at all, so they're looking fine. Doesn't seem to be flickering or anything like that when it's doing anything else. So it looks like there's no power supply overloads at least. So earlier on when I was trying to pull this thing apart, I noticed that this tilting bail was damaged. It was it was all twisted. It's actually offset to one side. It wasn't square. It's was bent like that. It's like this side had been hit or something. Well, the side you can't see right now. Yeah, over here, this corner, I've been hit and pushed it over sideways. So what I've done is I've taken it off, which is actually fairly easy to do. So we've got these covers here, which I just push for it. You slide these covers off, you have to sort of kind of get behind them and pop the edges off. Then you can slide the covers off. You've got two screws each side. And you can take those two screws out. Now watch out when you do that, because there is a spring in here, and it will try and push away. You don't want to damage the threads, so you have to kind of hold it in place which you can do fairly easy, it's not that strong a spring. You hold it in place under the screws and then you can let go and take the spring out and everything. And do obviously do that both sides. And I've done that and I, I've now taken this thing away and I've actually squared this up. And so it's now actually straight. And I can move it easily, it's not a problem. So it's fairly even gaps now. Whereas before it was all wonky, so I'm happy with that. Thought I'd show you how to do that. So the other mechanical repair I've got to do is this rear foot here. So I need to try and get this rear panel off. And I think I probably can. I think it's just a, some screws hold that panel on. I'm pretty sure. I'm not hoping anyway. It looks like it's a trim panel. It's the main bezel, which is the main attachment. And this is attached to that. So I think I can get this panel off and I can go and straighten this up. Tidy all that up. So that'll be the next thing I need to do. So it ended up being a bit more involved than I thought. So I've had to get the back entire back panel off, which is fairly easy actually. I've had to get all those screws out, which is fine. Um, I've got one thing holding this in now, and that's this fuse holder. Just the one thing holding it in, so I've got to take the fuse holder off, which is a bit of a pain. That's what's holding it in now. It's got screws that go right through to this, so you have to dismantle all this stuff and detach it in order to be able to pull that panel off. Um, here's the fan assembly. For those that want to know, it's a 24 volt fan. It's rated at 2,700 something a minute. It says U. I don't know why U, but it's made in West Germany. EBM fan, metal bladed, seems like a really quality fan but it is noisy, that's any problem. I don't know if I can rubber mount this or something and maybe try and make it quieter but yeah maybe I should just see if I can pull the cover up. It's got some screws maybe I can pull this cover off here or something, maybe lubricate it. Maybe that's what it needs is some lubrication, it might be fixable. But yeah I still got to get this cover off so I need to get this fuel solder out which is a bit of a pain. Which has got these wires which I'm going to have to probably desolder, it's a bit inconvenient. But interesting, it's got a fuse over here on the main board. So why has it got a fuse there, up the top, up there, and, and one here? I don't know. It's a bit surprising. I thought we'd just have one or the other, but it's got two. Maybe one's for really serious faults. Be easy apart from the fuse holder. And unfortunately, you can actually see that the piece of the back is actually broken off where that screw normally goes through. There's a stud that's supposed to be on it. So that's the foot there, which has broken right off. That's a bit of a shame. Um, I'll have to do something with that, maybe, but... I'm just going to be relying on the thin aluminium sheet here rather than the main chassis, but oh well, here's what it is. But this is a part now. So, let's uh, try and flatten this thing out. I've already flattened it a little bit. You know these little hammers and stuff I was buying? This is why I bought them. This is going to be a bit loud, sorry. Now the problem is, being aluminium, it's actually stretched a little bit, so it may not want to go right back. It's getting there. Still got some more work to do, but uh, I'll get there in the end. You don't have to see the whole thing, do you? Poor ears. Well, I think that'll do. That's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better than it was. Once I get it in place, it should be fairly good. I mean, it's fairly straight. I mean, it's not too bad. Probably only mean to say it will stretch. 
I do still have a crease here, but it might not matter. Once I get the foot back on here, it might actually just disappear anyway. It's not too bad. I might, I might try and beat that bit there slightly more, maybe. It is slightly raised still, but yeah, it's pretty much there, isn't it? Right, so I've taken the fan out. Let's see if we can pull this thing apart, and maybe we can actually service this fan and put it back into use rather than replacing it. So, there's an insulator, and there's a circlip. So yes, that will come apart. There's a circlip right there. So if I can get that clip off, then I can probably pull this fan housing off here, and lubricate it all, and see if it works any better. Actually, I don't have any circlip pliers in there, I can get in there with that. I can't, I was just trying to use a screwdriver, and I can't really get it with that. So what I'm gonna do, actually, is just lubricate it this way up and hopefully it'll just run through the bearing there and get right through to the other bearing. Maybe I'll just try that and see if that does a job. Maybe it'll work. I've reassembled it. I've basically filled up a little hole in the centre. It's basically worked through, went right through. So I was going to leave it this way up for a little bit to let it run right down to both bearings. That's already a lot quieter and it's spinning a bit longer too. So looking promising. What I'll do is I'll power this up and let it run for a little bit on 24 volts before I actually reinstall it and just see how it goes. Right, so I've got to hook up the power supply. I've got to set 8 volts. I'll just do some testing just now. 8 volts is basically as low as it will go to actually start. 7 volts, it won't actually keep going. It will start, then it will stop. Must be like the inrush from the capacitors discharging or something anyway. 8 volts is where it will run constantly, but I can hear it rumbling. Let's wind the voltage up. 18 volts. 20. Twenty-four. Mostly now I can hear is the, is the breeze coming off it. Mostly here now the blades rather than the bearing. So I think it's an improvement. It's now drawing 200 milliamps as well. I can still hear the bearings a little bit as it's going slower. As it's, when it's going full speed, I don't really hear the bearing that much. Um, yeah, I mean, probably should replace it. I don't think I've got anything suitable though. I'll have to have a look. Well, I had a look. I don't have any 24 volt fans, so it's going back in. And yes, these bolts are a bit bent. I should probably replace them actually. If I've got something the same thread and stuff, I'll have a look at doing it. I'm not sure if I do. So there's the rear rebuilt again. So that's all finished. You can see it's all looking pretty straight now. It's not looking too bad at all. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's a lot better than it was. You wouldn't really know it's been damaged, would you? Just by looking at it, it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. The fan I may replace. Actually, now I've got it back in the casing. Let's power it up again, see if it's any quieter than it was before. Right, let's power this thing up and actually see what it's like. You ready? Is it any quieter or not? Marginally, still pretty noisy. Yeah, oh, well. kind of needs a new fan, really. So much quieter. Right, I'll see if I can find one. Also, I'm going to come back and do some more video on this once I've got the parts I need to finish fixing it. So, I've done the mechanical repairs at least. I still got to do the front panel here, this piece, which is you know all cracked off and stuff there. So I to do something with this and repair this back to original, if I can, just to get it nice again. We'll see. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Bye.